Left all my uh, fishing clothing at home, didn't I? Just got my elastic in it. Just ran over to see the boys over fishing over the corner. And uh, yeah, he's just stuck into a hand. I saw my rod knocking. And lo and behold, I've come over and it stopped. Yeah, yeah, that's a knock. I've got the drag set quite light because. Uh, Obviously, I walked away from my rods. As you'll see, I haven't even got the second rod in yet. Right, let's get into this. Oh, I can't believe that. That was definitely a fish. That was definitely a hand. That it was a right good run as well. Um, just, just come off. Just, just come on up. Um, but yeah, I'm buzzing for that. I'm well happy. Just getting baited up and back out there. How are we folks? Welcome back. Firstly, apologies about the wind noise. There's not a lot I can do about it. I'll try and edit it out. I get the feeling most of this video will probably be played out, dubbed over with some cheesy music somewhere. Anyway, uh, last chance. So, I thought I had to brave the weather conditions. Go for it. Uh, yeah, first time I've managed to actually get the beach rods out properly on this trip. So I felt like I needed to try and get them out. Otherwise it'd have been a waste of space in the van really. Moment of appreciation. Uh, the guys, there's a few guys over fishing behind me. Uh, because I left all my clothing at home. Fishing gear that is. I always leave my elastic in my my jacket pocket. Oh, gotta go. Well, that's what I was giving those little knots, those little tap taps. A little pouting. I guess that's the uh, the south coast version of the whiting. But uh, yeah, let's get him all up and uh, send him on his way. Yeah, so as I was saying, just a, a quick moment of appreciation for the guys down here fishing today. Um, I think one of them's name was Kev. He's got a Holton's Angling. On. Uh, forgot my forgot my elastic, went over and seen them guys. Tried to trade in for a couple of rigs that I got, uh, my panel rigs. Um, didn't want anything for them uh, and, and give me a, a roll of elastic, so uh, really appreciate that. Without that, I'd have been stuffed really. I've got crab, squid, and rag, but I've only bought a quarter of a pound of rag, so wouldn't have lasted long at all. So, yeah, big, th big thanks to them guys. Uh, without that, I uh, wouldn't have been fishing. My ragworm would have lasted about half an hour and that would have been me done. So, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're watching the video, drop us a comment down below. Try and organise it. I'll come down and uh, come out fishing with you at some point. You guys can show me the ropes and uh, I'll get you a couple of beers. And then last but not least, on to the fishing. Uh, so, yeah, we're set up. It's, it's low water, just after low water, so fishing the flood. This spot was recommended to me by the guys at, at Holton, uh, Holton Road Angling Centre. So check them out if you're down this way. The bait's really good quality, you know, decent advice. As as you should have seen, I hadn't even got the second rod set up and I had a good knock uh, actually while I was over talking to the guys just over the way. So um, always appreciate good, honest local advice. You go to some tackle shops and they'll send you to the arse end of nowhere. They're not fishing very well, but. Uh, these guys seem really genuine. 
other than the wind, it's turned into quite a nice day. It started off really overcast, there's some big rain showers, rain clouds knocking about. It's hoping for a bit of rain, it's been 30 odd degrees all week, um, but it's not material, I say, oh, we've just got the wind to contend with. Hopefully, you can hear me all right. If not, like I say, I'll dub most of this over and put subtitles on or something. Might take me a week or two to figure out how to do it, but I'll figure it out. And they were saying it fishes better on the flood, so fingers crossed. Hounds is the target. Uh, I've already knocked off this year my target to catch my first ray. Hounds is the next one on the list. Um, looking at these conditions, rays, I'm not expecting rays today. It's, uh, it's far too choppy. Certainly where I fish locally, I wouldn't be expecting a ray in conditions like this. Um, but yeah, we've already had some, some good knocks, so hopefully we'll get into that first smooth hand. Tide's well on its way in now, we're getting pushed all the way back. We started probably 30 or 40 yards into the water now, which means I'm probably not casting much further past that in this wind. I'd say 60 yards probably tops on my cast. Uh, I'm not a big caster. Water's filling in behind us. I think options are move up onto here, which is probably going to give us another 20, 20 minutes, half an hour maybe tops fishing into this bit of a bay here uh, or move around onto the other side where the other guys um, have moved in and fish into the bay where it looks it looked fairly uh, clean bottom through there uh, and then just try and fish off the rocks there as best we can. I think at the minute I think I'm going to go with option B. Right decision made we're moving around the corner and let me tell you these straps are not forgiving at all on sunburn. Right, I'll bring you back where we set up around there. Alright, so I was talking to Sean and Kev, who were over here fishing earlier, and when I offered Sean and uh, Kev that, when I offered Kev those uh, pen, pennel rigs earlier, he says, nah, I, don't, I only fish with, with dongle rigs. So, I've rigged myself, since I snapped off on this one, I've rigged myself a circle, and I've just made this little little dongle, very makeshift, very Heath Robinson, but I'm going to strap this bit of crab on and see how it goes. There you go then, all elasticated up, looks something like that, very, very scrappy, but let's see if it does the job. Well that's it, phone's dead, uh, I did just as the phone was about to die, I get a text off Sarah saying, I'm here which means she's come to pick me up. So I best get wrapped up uh, and go home. So. Also, the tide is pushing us further and further back all the time. So yeah, let's get wrapped up.
Alright, you guys. Stay put. Come right back. In. Oh, my phone's dead, so I can't get any pictures. Oh, I'm chuffed with that. Oh, hopefully, I can get a couple of good stills. Oh, get in. Right, let's get him on a look at the placement of that. Right, that's it, I'm converted. Dongle rigs from now on. Oh. as easy as that. Getting back, I'm not even gonna wave because he put up a hell of a scrap. I don't want to knacker him out. Let's try and find somewhere to get him back in. Oh shit, there will do. Oh. Go on, bud. Oh, see you later. Oh, and he's off. Not the best release I'll have made, but whilst I'm battling all that. Oh, shit. oh my gear's all getting washed out. Oh, that sums up this session an absolute shit show. But there we go. Woo! Smooth iron on the dongle, homemade dongle on the beach. Oh, so happy. What a way to end this Wales trip. I am buzzing. I am absolutely buzzing. Oh, phone's died. GoPro finally not packed up on me. I hope you can see all that. Get in. Woo. Well, as you can probably tell by the uh, change in scenery, back in Derbyshire, got back quite late. Uh, it was about half past nine, I think, four and a half hours it took us to get back with a stop for the dogs for grab some grab some food and stuff. So, um, yeah, the, literally the only thing I did before bed last night was check that GoPro footage and make sure I got footage of that. Uh, my first ever, if I haven't mentioned it, smooth down. I'm still buzzing about that. After that, to be honest, if it had been down to me, I'd, I'd have still been out there fishing now. Um, I, was, I was buzzing. I'm still buzzing now. Day on. Already planning on the drive home last night. Already started planning another trip. Uh, 
if I go away on my own, if I get out in the connect and just camp for, in my mind, I'm thinking Friday night, Saturday night, possibly bomb down to Bristol, uh, you know, Porter's Head, Ladies Bay, or Lady Bay, uh, get a couple of sessions in there, high and low water marks, head over the bridge, uh, fish the, the Welsh side, and back down to Barry, um, and fish down there again. I think you can make a good trip uh, in two days. Ideally, I'd like to get back down and do that weekend away um, soon, but the reality of it is uh, I've got three and a half weeks, four weeks, until me and the boys are going for two weeks to Mexico chasing some big fish out there uh, on a lad's holiday. Um, given the circumstances, I think I need to earn some serious brownie points for that so the next uh, next few weeks is probably going to be spent heavily DIYing um, and up to my nuts in that sort of stuff so uh, reality is we're probably looking mid to late September uh, for another big trip like that and then just a final note about safety and fish handling um, I think I mentioned it several times yesterday um, I wasn't as organised as I should have been I never put myself in any real danger. Um, I don't know if you'll have seen footage, but it's an easy enough mark to get off, um, as no doubt you'll have seen. Um, the tide did catch up me as I was playing that uh, playing that smooth hand in, um, and uh, got got up and into my gear. So um, so yeah, always be careful of that. And then fish handling is the other point. Um, it's always top of my priority to make sure that fish get released. Um, I do take fish for the table, only ever enough for you know one, possibly two meals. Uh, stomach aversion is something that I'm aware of in shark species. Um, I did do some research into fish handling, um, specifically a smooth hounds, as I did with rays when uh, when I first when I went targeting them. Um, so uh, yeah, stomach aversion is quite common. Uh, it's a fish's natural way, or shark's natural way of uh, clearing things that they think is causing them irritation in the stomach. So um, that fish should just naturally um, swallow its stomach again once it's back swimming in the water. Uh, I did get excited, um, did get carried away. Like I say, it was a combination of excitement and the tide catching up with me um, and lifted the fish by a tail. Don't recommend that. I shouldn't have done that. That's... Uh, that's my own admission. Um, shark, especially shark species, um, they use the, um, the water pressures to balance themselves out. So always try and support them under the front, under the front fins if possible. Uh, as you'll have seen, I didn't measure it, didn't weigh it. I'd probably put it around about the five or six pound mark. Maybe I'm only being a little bit conservative there. Um, it's definitely not. I wouldn't have said it was anywhere near the double figure that I'm after. Um, but for a first smooth hand, I'm chuffed with it. I'm still chuffed with it. Um, I'll take that. Uh, but yeah, I didn't mess about weighing it, didn't measure it. Uh, my priority was get a couple of snapshots um, off the go on the GoPro uh, and get that fish returned. Again, wasn't the best release. Um, if I hadn't have been in such a flap with, you know, tide coming in, getting around my getting around my tackle and stuff, um, I should really have looked for. A bit of a deeper mark to release it off in. I did make sure that that fish went back. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this little mini whale series, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe. Really appreciate all the subscribers I've got so far. Um, not in massive numbers by any chance, by any means, but me and Sarah have got a little side bet on uh, where if I can get to 100 subscribers before Mexico, she's going to pay for a charter. So. There's a bit of an incentive for both of us. Um, yeah, other than that, the only thing really left for me to say is if you've stuck around through all my ramblings, thanks for watching. Um, take care of yourselves. And until next time, tight lines. Take care. And here, I'll leave you with a bit of change of scenery to end. <laughs>